Atlantic Broadband Cable, in cooperation with the South Union Township Supervisors, presents the South Union Township Sports Network. Today, via tape delay from the Thomas Landman Field, the home of the Laurel Highlands High School baseball team, Laurel Highlands Mustangs host the Carrick Raiders. Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Morozak with Gary Frankhauser and Jerry Dupe, and welcome you aboard for today's high school baseball game. South Union Township Sports Network coverage is brought to you as a joint cooperative venture featuring Township Supervisors Bob Schiff-Bauer, Rick Fernan and Jason Scott, Atlantic Broadband Cable, Armstrong Cable, and our friends at CUTV, including Gary Smith. Again, Brian Morozak with Gary Frankhauser and Jerry Dupay, and we'll be back with the lineups for both teams after these messages. Centers for Rehab Services, CRS, a part of UPMC and the Center for Sports Medicine is a proud sponsor of the South Union Township Sports Network and its coverage of area youth sports. Make Centers for Rehab Services your choice for all of your physical and occupational therapy needs. CRS, located at 160 Wayland Smith Drive, provides physical therapy, occupational therapy, work injury programs, and hand therapy. Valuing patient satisfaction is one of their highest priorities. Centers for Rehab Services offers a patient-centered environment where each patient has an individualized treatment plan developed for their specific needs. They are experts in helping you recover from injuries, increase strength, and build endurance. CRS professionals have become highly skilled through a strong commitment to continuing education and advanced certifications to ensure the most cutting-edge and cost-effective treatment for their patients. Jim Burns, a lifetime Uniontown area resident, is a licensed physical therapist and facility director of the Uniontown location, as well as a field faculty instructor for Duquesne University and for the University of Pittsburgh School of Physical Therapy. He invites you to stop by his state-of-the-art location and discuss your rehabilitation needs. Center for Rehab Services is participating with most insurance plans, including all Highmark products, UPMC Health Plan, and Medicare. Available five days a week and offering extended hours for patient convenience, patients are seen within 24 to 48 hours and walk-ins are always welcome. Patients may also be seen through direct access which does not require a physician's prescription. CRS worked with physicians and other health care providers to help you find relief, live your life again, and get you back into the game. For more information, call CRS at 724-437-7500. Where you treat for physical therapy is always your choice, so ask for Centers for Rehab Services. It's your health, it's your choice. people unknowingly have chronic liver disease and discover it during routine blood testing. Possible causes include alcohol, hepatitis C, fatty liver, and iron overload. If left unchecked, this can lead to cirrhosis or severe liver scar. Offer the latest testing and treatment for chronic liver disease. SWGI, Specialists in Digestive Health. Davis and Davis, attorneys at law. Every person who's been injured, when they come in, has an expectation that their case is important, and it is to us. We take these cases very seriously. So that experience that we have is unique also because we have experience in these communities, in Uniontown, in Washington, in Waynesburg, in these court systems. You don't have to go to Pittsburgh to be represented by attorneys who don't know their way around your community. Davis and Davis, Attorneys at Law. Around the infield to start things, Brian at third base, Nick Kumar at shortstop, Michael Bristensky at second base, Santino Mara, and at first base is Garrett Myers. In that outfield, left field, Alex Gesk, senior, and also Dylan Bonner, a senior, and Tyler Becker, a sophomore, in right field. On the mound, Dino Vecchioli, and behind the plate, Caleb Scott for the Mustangs. We'll take a quick 30-second break and be back with the first pitch here on WMBS, the South Union Township Sports Network and the Triple Live High School Sports Network. <laughs> Thank you. 
Turn to the experts. Fayette Furnace Company Incorporated, serving the Tri-County area since 1920, the area's oldest and most reliable heating and cooling contractor, specializing in carrier equipment. Employee owned and operated, choosing Fayette Furnace Company and Carrier not only gives you over 200 years of experience, but gives you the experts to help you solve your home's comfort needs. And call Fayette Furnace Company and Carrier to solve your home comfort needs today. Call 724-438-5400 or look up Fayette Furnace Company on the web at FayetteFurnaceCompany.com. Turn to the experts, almost 100 years of serving the Tri-County area. For more information, call Mike at 724-438-5400. That's 724-438-5400 for Fayette Furnace Company. Creditors calling you day and night? Your debt overwhelms you? Although you may feel that you're in a hopeless situation, Zebli Mahalov and White can help. We're a full-service local bankruptcy firm that knows what a difficult time this is and what to do to help you get a fresh start. Call Zebli Mahalov and White today for a free consultation. Your hometown bankruptcy firm. Call us today. Don't borrow more money until you talk to Zebli Mahalov and White. Good luck to the Mustangs from the South Union Township Supervisors, Rick Vernon, Jason Scott, and Robert Schiffbauer. Welcome back to Tom Lamon Field here on the campus at Laurel Highlands, a sun-drenched field here at Laurel Highlands. A little wind blowing out to right field, I think. If we get the flag vision and leading off for Carrick, number 14, Skylar Gianetti takes strike one. First pitch at exactly 4 o'clock, 59 degrees under sunny skies. You mentioned the winds, Gary. Might see some gusts up to 30 miles an hour. Dino Vecchioli with the 0-1 pitch. There's a fly ball to right field down the line. Drifting foul off the mound down in the bullpen down the right field line. Giving chase over there in right field for the Mustangs, Tyler Becker. Our time and temperature brought to you by Fayette County Commissioner Vince Vasidis. So out in front now, Dino Vecchioli 0-2. Dino, a lot of experience last year. Left-hander winds and deals a little high and tight. One ball and two strikes. And Gary Giannetti's been really hot to start the season. Eight of 12 with the plate batting. 667 with a homer and six RBIs. Those are gaudy numbers at any point in the season. One-two pitch, swing and a miss at a ball outside. So start things off with a strikeout by Dino Vecchioli. We'll bring up the catcher, number three, Dylan Chan, Jr., for Carrick. Vecchiola's only appearance came against Chambersburg, worked three innings, struck out four, gave up three hits over those three innings and did not give up a run. His control was outstanding last year, and I'm sure he is going to improve on that this year. Fastball, swing and a miss, strike one. You go back to last year, Gary, his ERA was under one for most of the season. I think in that final regular season game against Hemfield, he got rocked a little bit and then had some issues in the playoffs as well. 0-1 offering, that's on the outside corner for a called strike two. You go back to last year's postseason, it was actually Greg Lancaster who was the star for the Mustangs on the mound. Yeah, it came out of nowhere to... Uh, be the ace reliever for the Mustangs. 0-2 pitch. There's a shot right at us. Almost hit the camera right underneath Jerry here. Wow. Had me jumping away. Picked a good game to be off to the left here. Yeah, so. a little um, late swing there by Chan. Line drive right over the first base coach right below us here in the press box down the first base line. Chan's also gotten off to a nice start this season, batting 625, 5 of 8 with two doubles. Junior catcher for the Carrick Raiders. Here's a pitch, high inside. 
By One the way, ball. calling the balls and strikes today, Mike Doppelhauer, Jerry Simon on the bases. One ball, two strikes, one out here, just underway, top of the first. With the signal, now the strike three called again on the outside corner this time. Nice placement there by Dino. Leads things off with two strikeouts. And that'll bring up the first baseman, number 34, A.J. Perella. By the way, the stop half of the first inning being brought to you by Davis and Davis, attorneys at law, helping local people with their legal matters since 1976. Just happened to leave that office. Here's the pitch. Curveball inside corner for a strike. They're always busy. Little. Perella also playing well, 444 average, four of nine. Senior first baseman for the Carrick Raiders. Dino does a great job of changing speeds, moving in and out. That ball's in the dirt for a ball. Almost got him to chase. It's been his primary tools throughout his early career here at Laurel Highlands High School. One on one, two outs, right handing, hit it almost. Offered at that check swing, did not go. Two balls and a strike, A.J. Perella. You folks on the radio side, Laurel Highlands in the home whites. Red numbers, blue, red, and white caps. Carrick away grays with blue numbers trimmed in gold. Ball at the letters that time called strike. Evens the count at two and two with two outs here in the top of the first. No score. With this new look section this year, Gary, hard to know what you're going to get out of some of your opponents. 2-2 two -two pitch on the outside corner again. Called strike three. So Dino Vecchiola strikes out the side to start things off here in the first. And the Mustangs will get their first opportunity at the bat. Right after this, you're listening to WMBS. At what point did everything change? When did service get taken out of service industries? It's too bad, because people are busy these days, at life, at work, at play. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you want service, real service, from a person you know and a face you trust. At a bank where changing with the times doesn't mean leaving people behind. We're proud to be a part of your community. We're United Bank, at your service. Welcome back on WMBS and the South Union Township Sports Network. Simulcast here this afternoon. Here's your batting order for the Mustangs. Dylan Bonna, senior, leading off, wearing number six and playing center field. Batting second, number eight, Santino Mara, the second baseman, a junior. Batting third, number nine, Nate Zimkowski, the designated hitter. He's also a junior. Number 16 in the cleanoff spot, Nick Kumar, just a sophomore, third baseman. Number five, Alex Guest, number 10, I'm sorry, in the fifth spot, wearing number 10, playing left field. In the sixth spot, number 22, Caleb Scott, the catcher. 
also a junior. In the seventh spot, number 17, Tyler Becker in right field. Eighth spot, number 25, Garrett Myers, the first baseman, a junior. And number two in that ninth spot, Michael Brastinski, the shortstop. Defensively for Carrick, Dominique Weiss in left, Ryan Henderson in center, Jonas Chan in right, around the horn, Damian Weiss at third, Skylar Gianetti at short, Tehran Ross at second, and A.J. Perello at first. Nathan Robinson on the mound, and Dylan Chan catching. There's a foul off to the right side, and it's going to get just over us here again on the right field side, first base side, 0-1 to Dylan Bonham. Robinson making his first appearance of the season for the Carrick Raiders on the mound, so no stats yet on Mr. Robinson. Right-hander, strong right-hander, another foul back there, making it 0-2. Dylan Bonna, 3-for-6 so far this season at the plate, batting 500. No homers, four RBIs. Also has a pair of doubles so far this season. Senior center fielder for Laurel Highlands. Here's the 0-2 offering. Curveball hangs inside. Good look there by Dillon. This bottom half of the first inning being brought to you by First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County. One-two pitch. Fastball shot up the middle. Shortstop over to get it. Skyler Gianetti with the throw over to first base. Perella quickly down the line. Bona close play, but for the first out. Well executed defensively there from Gianetti and Perella. So Bona retired, and then I'll bring up Santino Mara. Mara Islands is a team early on this season, batting 281 at the plate. Santino, the junior second baseman, looks at a curveball in for a strike. And like Bada, Mara batting 500. He's four of eight with two RBIs. Also has a triple early on this season. Santino, a junior. Fastball, there's a high fly ball to center field. Drifting back and fighting the wind and gets over his head for a double. He's going to try for three. That ball was in the air a long time and in with a stand-up triple, Santino Mara. Second triple of the season for Mara, and it seemed like Henderson out there in center field had some trouble with the sun, had some trouble picking up that shot from Mara. So the Mustangs in business now with Mara on third and one out here in the bottom half of the first inning. We've seen that here at Tom Lambman Field, Brian, over the years that uh, high sky and the wind plays havoc with some of those fly balls to the outfield. That's going to bring up Zimkowski. He looks at a ball high as coming down the line from third base, Antina Mara. I'd have to think, though, Gary, too, for some of these teams coming in, they've never played at this field before, especially in this conference this season, so maybe more of a home field advantage for the Mustangs. Fastball inside, 2-0 now to Zimkowski, trying to bring home Santino. Nate just one of six so far this season, batting 167 with an RBI. The Mustangs DH today. 2-0 pitch. There's another high fly to center field. Getting it under at this time is Henderson, but I believe that's going to be plenty deep for Santino Amara to score from third. So RBI, sacrifice fly to center field by Nate Zimkowski. Puts the Mustangs on top, one to nothing. Second RBI of the season for Zimkowski. And a good start for Laurel Highlands here in the first inning. You had Vecchiola strike out the side in the top of the first. Now a run already on the board here in the bottom half of the inning. Lean up, clean up hitter Nick Kumar. Curveball missing outside. And really tough to make much of these early season numbers. We mentioned how well Zimkowski hit a season ago for Laurel Highlands. Came in today batting just 167. Kumar without a hit 0 for 7. Mustang sophomore does have one walk so far this year. Fastball below the knees for ball two. Laurel Highlands only two games under their belt as well, Gary. They try to play a few more. Connellsville canceled out on them last Thursday, and also Derry canceled on them twice, once on Saturday and once this past Monday. Ground ball to second base, picked up there, now bobbled at first base, so an error on the catch. Easily over was Tyron Ross to make the play at second base. Flipped to the first baseman, Perella, but he was unable to make the catch, so on with the error is Nick Kumar. And that should have been as routine as it gets right there. Ground ball to second base. And for whatever reason, Perella is usually pretty sure-handed from some of the numbers that we've looked at. 
Just couldn't hang on to that one. So Kumar aboard via the air, and that gives the Mustangs another opportunity to add on to their one to nothing lead. Alex Gesk steps in, looks at ball one outside, left-handing, left-handed hitting Alex Guest, the left fielder. And anything else that happens this half inning, just gravy for the Mustangs. Maybe his glove isn't broken in yet, Brian. In early season. Carrick's played three games so far this year. Timeout called by the catcher for Carrick, Dylan Chan. He'll head out and talk to Robinson a little bit. Aside from the wind that we've seen out there, Gary, really couldn't ask for better weather conditions here for early April in the first conference game of the high school baseball season. Absolutely. Close to 60 degrees game time temperature. 1-0 pitch on the way. Foul back against the screen here at Tom Lamb and Field. Another nice crowd coming in now to watch the Mustangs and Carrick. one nothing here in the bottom half of the first. Mustangs striking here in the bottom half of the inning. Pat throw over to first and gets away, and that might get into the dugout. Does not. Comes off the wall here right underneath us. So low throw over by Robinson to Perella. No chance for an advancement that time by Kumar. Carrick plays their home games at Volunteer Field just off of Route 51, just south of the city of Pittsburgh. Kumar on the move. High pitch and no chance as Kumar is in safely. Pitch high and outside and really not a chance there for the catcher. Dylan Chan to throw out Kumar. Big jump. Count two and one as you work here with two outs in the bottom half of the first inning. And Kumar now in scoring position. Here's the pitch. Foul back again by Gesk. Hanging tough. Have to send our best out to Barry Rosner. Barry's had some health issues here over the last couple of weeks. Not here at the game today. We hope he gets better soon. See him out here at the field for Mustang baseball later on this year. That is kind of strange not having the fixture of the Mustangs. Barry Rosner here. There's a little roller down to first base. Perella down to one knee. Over to first, unassisted to retire Alex Gesk here in the bottom of the first. But the Mustangs do strike for one. We'll go to the top half of the seconds. Laurel Highlands one, Carrick nothing here on WMBS and the South Union Township Sports Network. Centers for Rehab Services, CRS, a part of UPMC and the Center for Sports Medicine, is a proud sponsor of the South Union Township Sports Network and its coverage of area youth sports. Make Centers for Rehab Services your choice for all of your physical and occupational therapy needs. CRS, located at 160 Wayland Smith Drive, provides physical therapy, occupational therapy, work injury programs, and hand therapy. Valuing patient satisfaction is one of their highest priorities. Centers for Rehab Services offers a patient-centered environment where each patient has an individualized treatment plan developed for their specific needs. They are experts in helping you recover from injuries, increase strength, and build endurance. CRS professionals have become highly skilled through a strong commitment to continuing education and advanced certifications to ensure the most cutting-edge and cost-effective treatment for their patients. Jim Burns, a lifetime Uniontown area resident, is a licensed physical therapist and facility director of the Uniontown location, as well as a field faculty instructor for Duquesne University and for the University of Pittsburgh School of Physical Therapy. He invites you to stop by his state-of-the-art location and discuss your rehabilitation needs. Center for Rehab Services is participating with most insurance plans, including all Highmark products, UPMC Health Plan, and Medicare. Available five days a week and offering extended hours for patient convenience, patients are seen within 24 to 48 hours and walk-ins are always welcome. Patients may also be seen through direct access which does not require a physician's prescription. CRS worked with physicians and other health care providers to help you find relief, live your life again, and get you back into the game. For more information, call CRS at 724-437-7500. Where you treat for physical therapy is always your choice, so ask for Centers for Rehab Services. It's your health, it's your choice.
colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer deaths. Signs include abdominal pain and rectal bleeding. Colon cancer develops from a degenerating benign growth or polyp. Doctors performing colonoscopy are able to remove precancerous polyps, thus preventing colon cancer. This saves lives, and the American Cancer Society now recommends that everyone have a colonoscopy every 10 years, beginning at age 50. Offer the latest diagnostic testing, SWGI, Specialists in Digestive Health. Davis and Davis, Attorneys at Law. Important for people to know that we represent injured people to the best of our ability and we've been successful doing that. And I don't say that to have people come to see us because we have been successful. I say that because it's true and it's important. Another important aspect is the experience that we have is local experience, experience in the court system in Uniontown, in Washington, in Waynesburg. Davis and Davis, Attorneys at Law. Primer Ozak, Gary Frankhauser, and Jerry Dupay back here at Landman Field at Laurel Highlands High School. The Mustangs a one to nothing lead over the Carrick Raiders, heading to the top half of the second inning. Damian Weiss, Dominique Weiss, and Nathan Robinson do up for the Carrick Raiders. And on the mound for Laurel Highlands, Dino Vecchiola looked very impressive, Gary, in the top half of the first inning, striking out the side, sending down Skylar Gianetti, Dylan Chan, and A.J. Perella. Sure did, and really only threw, I think, two balls the whole first inning. Trying to keep it going here in the top half of the second. First pitch on the way. Fastball low. Misses for ball one to Damian Weiss. The Carrick third baseman came in three for nine on the season, batting 333. Junior with four RBIs on this young season. Now the 0-1 on the way, and it's a ground ball right back at Vacciola. He'll jog towards first to make the throw over to Garrett Myers to retire. Damian Weiss won three for the first outs of this top half of the second inning. Easy play there for Santino, I'm sorry, Dino Vecchiola as he uh, very fundamentally runs it toward the bag and flips over to Myers for the easy first out. Now they'll bring up Dominique Weiss. He's batting 222, two of nine so far this season with a pair of RBIs. Takes the first pitch here for ball one. This half inning being brought to you by Peachin's Pharmacy located inside the Peachin's Superfood. Martin, Gary, we have to send out a happy 50th birthday to Jimmy Capuzzi. That's for sure. Big 5-0 for James Capuzzi, the proprietor of Peachin's Pharmacy. That pitch in there for a strike out now even at 1-1. One one. I'm sure he has some big plans for tonight, celebrating the big 5-0. I think that's up to his wife. <laughs> Swing and a miss there, one and two now to Dominique Weiss. Laurel Highlands leading one to nothing. If you're just joining us, a sack fly RBI from Nate Zimkowski scored Santino Mara for the Mustangs' lone run of the game, and that one fouled off by Dominique Weiss. We're assuming that uh, Damien, who just grounded the, to the pitcher, and Dominique are twins, both juniors. Damien wearing 31 and Dominique 13. Yeah, you would think so. And now Vecchiola ready again. 1-2 pitch on the way and a line drive right at first base and Garrett Myers who makes the grab for the second out of the inning. Nice little play there by Garrett. Made it look rather casual. So Damian retired 1-3. F3 for Dominique Weiss. And now Nathan Robinson will come to the plate for his first plate appearance of the season. Senior on the mound today, the Carrick Raiders. And the lefty Vecchiola winds and fires the first pitch to Robinson, which misses just outside for ball one. This will start a busy stretch of games for Laurel Highlands, weather permitting. 1-0 on the way. This pitch in there for a strike to even up the count at 1-1. One one. The Mustangs will host Greater Latrobe on Friday, weather permitting. That'll be a simulcast game, both on the radio and TV side. Travel to Montour on Saturday and then play at Trinity on Monday and a ground ball here to short. Michael Brostensky over to Garrett Myers to end the innings. Another 1-2-3 inning as Robinson retired 6-3. Laurel Highlands leads Carrick 1-0 heading to the bottom of the first year of the Radcliffe Law Firm High School Sports Day.
Turn to the experts. Fayette Furnace Company Incorporated, serving the Tri-County area since 1920, the area's oldest and most reliable heating and cooling contractor, specializing in carrier equipment. Employee owned and operated, choosing Fayette Furnace Company and Carrier not only gives you over 200 years of experience, but gives you the experts to help you solve your home's comfort needs. And call Fayette Furnace Company and Carrier to solve your home comfort needs today. Call 724-438-5400 or look up Fayette Furnace Company on the web at FayetteFurnaceCompany.com. Turn to the experts, almost 100 years of serving the Tri-County area. For more information, call Mike at 724-438-5400. That's 724-438-5400 for Fayette Furnace Company. everything change? When did service get taken out of service industries? It's too bad because people are busy these days at life, at work, at play. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you want service, real service, from a person you know and a face you trust. At a bank where changing with the times doesn't mean leaving people behind. We're proud to be a part of your community. We're United Bank at your service. Heading to the bottom of the second inning, the Laurel Highlands Mustangs leading the Carrick Raiders by a score of one to nothing. Caleb Scott, Tyler Becker, and Garrett Myers do up for the Mustangs. And as usual, the Mustang lineup is uh, pretty strong top to bottom. You don't see much drop in the hitting ability from the top to the bottom of the lineup. Certainly a lot younger team this year that talking to head coach Scott DeBerry. Coach thinks they have a lot more pitching depth than they had a season ago. Certainly lost some big bats, though, out of the lineup to graduation. As Scott fouled off the first pitch. Now the 0-1 here from Nathan Robinson. is low to even up the count at 1-1. One one. Caleb came into this game batting 333, one for three so far this season with two RBIs. Now the 1-1 pitch from Nathan Robinson to Caleb Scott. Breaking ball, misses outside. Count now moves to 2-1. I know it's a product of our age, Brian, but uh, we saw all these kids coming up through the Little Leagues. For sure. For sure. A lot of these kids have done a great job down at the Hark League over the years, and Scott with a line drive, and that will drop in front of Ryan Henderson in center field. Henderson a little bobbly, but a regain. Caleb halfway towards second now will run back towards the first base bag. So leadoff single here in the bottom half of the second inning for Caleb Scott. Once again, the Mustangs in business. Just a line shot right up the middle. Good control at the bat for Caleb. Now they'll bring up Tyler Becker. Only Becker's second plate appearance of the season. 0 for 1, sophomore playing right field today. Batting left-handed against the righty Nathan Robinson. Now showing bunt, pulls back. Scott on his way to second. Will slide in safely with no throw. Another high and outside pitch from Robinson. Another difficult chance there for Dylan Chan, but it Huge jump again by Scott. Really no chance to make a throw. And not even contested. It's now a 1-0 count here from Robinson to Becker with Scott in scoring position at second. And the 1-0 pitch on the way. Catches the outside corner for a strike to even up the count at 1-1. One one. Outfield shallow and straight away. I wonder how much scouting these teams have done on one another. We mentioned the fact that this is the first time these two programs have probably ever seen each other. If they've seen each other before, it's been a long number of years ago. There's a swing and a miss out of Becker. Count now moves to one and two. I don't ever recall it, Brian, being around the baseball program for 30 years. 
And of course, we mentioned earlier that Carrick had played in the Pittsburgh City League until the 2013 season when the City League stopped sanctioning baseball, so they became a member of the WPIL for baseball. They still play in the Pittsburgh City League for a number of sports, including football and basketball. Got now two and two to Tyler Becker. Nobody out as we work here in the bottom half of the second inning. Laurel Highlands leading Carrick one to nothing. Robinson's 2-2 pitch to Becker misses outside, and now we're full of three and two. And certainly an odd conference this year. Laurel Highlands with Montour, West Allegheny, Trinity, Shar Valley, and Albert Gallatin also in the conference fold. It's Albert big. Gallatin really only the close opponent for the Mustangs this season. Becker fouls off another one there. Count remains full of three and two. I was just going to say a lot of long distance traveling. Trinity plays most of their home games at WNJ. That's where the Mustangs will head coming up next Monday. Montour plays at the Burkett Complex. Mustangs will play down there on Saturday. Of course, a lot of those fields have an artificial surface as well, and Becker draws a walk here on the 3-2 pitch, which misses outside. So both Caleb Scott and Tyler Becker reaching safely here in the bottom half of the second inning. The Mustangs now with two on and nobody out, and Garrett Myers coming to the plate. This half inning being brought to you by Ted Sova and Son Auto Repair on the Atlas Road in Hopwood. Only the third plate appearance of the season for Myers, who's batting 500, one for two. Looking for his first RBI of the season. Robinson from the stretch. Hander. Showing butt, Myers now pulls back. Pitch misses for ball one. See if Scott and Becker create a little motion here on the base paths. Might want to back off here, though, with still nobody out in the inning. Early on in the game, bottom of the second. Once again, Meyer showing bunt, and he fouls it off. Count now even at one and one. So Coach DeBerry going to a little small ball here in the early innings. Certainly smart, trying to get a couple across, especially with his ace, Vecchiola, on the hill. And you have to wonder if Laurel Highlands would jump out to a comfortable lead. Might the Mustangs use Vecchiola for only three innings, thus making him available for maybe Saturday or Monday? Another pitch in there for a strike to Myers to move the count to one and two. Did not show bunt that time. So now Myers behind one and two. Robinson from the stretch. Nobody out. Two on for the Mustangs, leading one to nothing here in the bottom half of the second inning. Robinson fires the one-two pitch, which misses outside. Count now even at two and two. A lot more pitches on the Carrick side for Nathan Robinson than the efficient Minimum faced by Vecchiola. And Dino's retired the minimum so far. Another pitch missing outside there from Robinson. Once again, we're full three and two. The second straight batter that Robinson has faced where the count's gone full three and two. Walked Tyler Becker. He was now at first base. Caleb Scott reached via single to center field. He's down at second now. Now the payoff pitch here to Garrett Myers from Nathan Robinson is on the way, and Myers a line drive, and this one will bounce in front of Ryan Henderson in center field. The Mustangs having to go station to station there as Scott had to hold up a little bit just in case that ball was caught in center field by Henderson, but nonetheless it will load the bases for Michael Brostensky. And Henderson actually made a play to third base trying to get the force out of Scott. As you said, Brian, he had to kind of hold up to see if Henderson was going to be able to catch that in center field. But now base is loaded, nobody out. Michael Brostensky coming to the plate. Michael, three for six so far this season, batting 500 with two RBIs. Table set here for Brostensky and the Mustangs. And Michael takes strike one here from Nathan Robinson. Infield in early for Carrick. Just behind the grass. Oh, one. That one actually almost clipped Rostensky on the inside. Just kind of bend himself back to avoid getting hit. Count now even at one and one. Robinson now aligned and fire the 1-1 one, one pitch. Brostensky hits it high in the air to center field. Ryan Henderson under it. He'll make the grab. Now tagging from third is Caleb Scott. He'll score the second Mustang run of the game. The other two base runners, Becker remaining at second and Myers remaining at first, but a sack fly RBI for Michael Brostensky, his third RBI of the season, scoring Caleb Scott. And both runs for the Mustangs come via sacrifice fly to the center field, and that's just good batting. Bases loaded, put the ball in play somewhere, and if, if you can, put it in the air to the outfield. 
Back to the top of the order now, and Dylan Bonner, who grounded out 6-3, first time up. And Bonner came into this game batting 500 with four RBIs. Opportunity to pick up another one here with two on, and we'll take the first pitch, a breaking ball for a strike from Nathan Robinson. Coach D. Barry going through a myriad of signs down there at third base. Hopefully Bonner knows what he's signaling. That pitch misses high. It was the take. <laughs> <laughs> Count now even at one and one. Bonner, the fifth Mustang to bat here in the bottom half of the second inning. Run in the first, run in the second so far for the Mustangs. One one here, another breaking ball just missing low to Dylan Bonner. Count now moves to two and one. Reminder for you folks on the radio side, we're also taping this game on the South Union Township Sports Network. You could watch the game via YouTube in a couple of days by searching South Union TV or following the South Union Township Sports Network on Facebook for program updates. And Bonner, ground ball here going foul on the left side. That's Facebook.com slash South Union TV. The game will also air on Atlantic Broadband Channel 17 and Armstrong Channel 61. It'll be on both Saturday and Sunday this weekend. The yeah, World Saturday at 5 Network. and Sunday at 6. Of course, we're also on the Triple Live High School Sports Network today as well. So a myriad of outlets to pick up our broadcast for sure. We got it covered. Here we go again. 2-1 to Bana, and this one missing, and both runners go and advance on the play. Becker down to third, and Myers into second. Again, no throw. Eliminates the force out. In this situation, might have said one and two. It was two and two earlier. That pitch missed, and now we're full to Dylan Bonner. Three and two. Robinson's pitch on the way. Breaking ball in there for strike three. So the punch out of Dylan Bonner is the second out recorded here in the bottom half of the second inning. Just froze Dylan with that slow curveball. This could not pull the trigger as it came in on the inside corner. First strikeout of the game for Nathan Robinson and now Santino Mara, who tripled and scored a run back in the first inning, batting for the second time in this game. And he'll take the first pitch for a strike, 0-1. The Mustangs now with two in scoring position. Becker down at third and Myers on second. One run already across here in the bottom half of the second inning. Would be a victory for Carrick to get out of this with just one run. I agree. Now the 0-1 to Mara, this one also fouled off here on the right side. Seen a lot of action on this right side early on in this game. Mustangs had the bases loaded with nobody out. Now with two outs, second and third. And Mara behind 0-2 against Nathan Robinson. We'll have to protect the plate here, and the breaking ball just misses low and outside. They missed by too much. Of course, we don't have the best angle here situated above the first base bag here at Landman Field at Laurel Highlands High School. 1-2 pitch on the way, and that one is in there for strike three. So Robinson freezing both Bonna and Mara, and the Carrick Raiders get out of the inning with only one run yielded to Laurel Highlands. It's 2-0 Mustangs over the Carrick Raiders after two here on the Radcliffe Law Firm High School Sports Day. Good luck to the Mustangs from the South Union Township Supervisors, Rick Vernon, Jason Scott, and Robert Schiffbar.
Here we go with the top half of the third inning. Bottom half of the order for Carrick, Alex Mann, Tehran Ross, and Ryan Henderson to face Dino Vecchiola. Of course, conference play getting underway around the WPIL tonight. Other conference games in Section 3-5A, Shar Valley at West Allegheny and Trinity at Albert Gallatin, that Shar Valley-West Allegheny game under the lights tonight. Alex Mann, the DH, stepping in left-handed. Big boy. Fouls that one back into the bleachers. That little screamer over there. Got to be on your toes up there in the bleachers behind third baseline. And Gary, according to the schedule that I have in front of me, Uniontown also opening up under the lights over at Bailey Park tonight, hosting Bell Vernon. Yeah, back at the uh, City Park. There's a ground ball right back to Dino. Left-hander flips it over to first baseman Garrett Myers for the easy first out. Two pitches, one out here in the top half of the third. I was talking to Uniontown Redevelopment Director Mark Rafel the other day, and Mark told me they actually got an artificial infield over there. Oh, I haven't been by. I'll have to check that out. Stepping in now, Tehran Ross, the second baseman, just a freshman. And right-hander now will rip one to left field down the line. That's in for a single. Coming over to make the play and now trying to stretch it into a double, and he does. Tehran Ross did not slow down coming around first base. Good speed. There's only a freshman, Gary. And that ball kind of died out there in the soft grass in left field. Alex Guest was over quickly, but... Good base running there by Tehran Ross. Came into the game one for five. Big hit there. Gives Carrick a runner in scoring position with one out here in the top half of the third. Brings up Ryan Henderson, the center fielder. Seen a lot of action on defense here so far, but first runner on for Carrick in scoring position with one out here in the third. Swing and a miss at the fastball. Strike one. Mustangs on top. Two to nothing. This happening may be brought to you by Russ Playho, your local Allstate insurance agent. You're in good hands with Russ Playho and Allstate. No one pitch from the stretch. Squares around a bunt, fouls it off to the right side. Tried to bunt for a base hit there. Running on the play out there at second base, Tehran Ross, but count now stands at 0-2. Of course, with Indians out playing on that artificial surface will certainly allow them to get more games in. You have some adverse weather conditions in the area. 0-2 pitch. High and outside. Pirates on after high school baseball. Correct, on the radio side. I think game two against the Cardinals. It's the brief two-game series there. Swing and a miss. Strike three. So going down on strikes, Ryan Henderson for the second out of the inning will bring up the leadoff hitter, Skylar Gianetti. He struck out in the first. Fourth strikeout recorded in this game for Vacciola. Two looking, two swinging. Senior shortstop for Carrick. There's a high fly ball to center field and in the gap. Guess going over, but making the catch in center field, running a long way is Dylan Bona. About 15 feet in front of the fence for the third out. So the Mustangs get out of it without any damage. We'll go to the bottom of the third here on WMBS, South Union Township Sports Network, and the Trib Live Sports Network. The Mustangs on top, two to nothing. Centers for Rehab Services, CRS, a part of UPMC and the Center for Sports Medicine, is a proud sponsor of the South Union Township Sports Network and its coverage of area youth sports. Make Centers for Rehab Services your choice for all of your physical and occupational therapy needs. CRS, located at 160 Wayland Smith Drive, provides physical therapy, occupational therapy, work injury programs, and hand therapy. Valuing patient satisfaction is one of their highest priorities. Centers for Rehab Services offers a patient-centered environment where each patient has an individualized treatment plan developed for their specific needs. They are experts in helping you recover from injuries, increase strength, and build endurance. CRS professionals have become highly skilled through a strong commitment to continuing education and advanced certifications 
to ensure the most cutting edge and cost effective treatment for their patients. Jim Burns, a lifetime Uniontown area resident, is a licensed physical therapist and facility director of the Uniontown location, as well as a field faculty instructor for Duquesne University and for the University of Pittsburgh School of Physical Therapy. He invites you to stop by his state-of-the-art location and discuss your rehabilitation needs. Center for Rehab Services is participating with most insurance plans, including all Highmark products, UPMC Health Plan, and Medicare. Available five days a week and offering extended hours for patient convenience. Patients are seen within 24 to 48 hours and walk-ins are always welcome. Patients may also be seen through direct access, which does not require a physician's prescription. CRS worked with physicians and other health care providers to help you find relief, live your life again, and get you back into the game. For more information, call CRS at 724-437-7500. Where you treat for physical therapy is always your choice, so ask for Centers for Rehab Services. It's your health, it's your choice. Southwestern Endoscopy Center is a state licensed and Medicare certified facility and emphasizes privacy, comfort, caring, and safety for colonoscopies and upper GI endoscopies. Painless procedures are done with twilight sedation given by a board certified anesthesiologist. The center accepts most insurance plans and is staffed by Drs. Ruth Hart, Calabrese, Stokes, SWGI, specialists in digestive health. We're back on the South Union Township Sports Network and WMBS. Bottom of the third. Mustangs on top. Three to nothing. Leading off Nate Zimkowski, the designated hitter. Takes strike one on the outside corner. Zimkowski, Kumar, and Gesk do up for the Mustangs here in the bottom half of the third. Curveball just misses outside. Zimkowski with one of the Mustang RBIs. Sacrifice fly back in the first. Again, the Carrick outfield shallow and straight away as Zimkowski looks at ball two. This happening being brought to you by Ford of Union Center at 40 West across from Applebee's. Nice to have them back with us for Mustang baseball here in 2019. And Robinson with the pitch. That's high and inside. Three and one now. So Zimkowski, pitchers count. Two one. I'm sorry. Here's the pitch. No, it was three and one. I had it correct. All four as he trots down the first baseline. Lead off walk for Nate Zimkowski. Mustangs with runners in both the first and the second inning. Kind of squandered a little bit of an opportunity in the second to break it open with bases loaded and nobody out, just scoring one run. We're seeing some activity down in the Carrick bullpen. Chris Malicki warming up. Kumar steps in, and he fouls this one off to the right side. Reached on an error in the first. Maliki, a left-hander as well, Gary. Number 16, junior. Good speed on at first with Nate Zimkowski. Gets a huge lead out here at first. Does not go. Curveball in the dirt. Might have had a one. chance there of going. Yep. Robinson really hasn't shown any kind of a move over here to first base. There it is. Throws it over. Diving back in is Zimkowski safely. Made the first check of the game. I think we had one in the first there, inning yeah, that first, he yeah. did throw in the dirt and yeah, got away correct. from the first baseman. but Haven't had many. No. Another big lead for Zimkowski. Going to throw over again. That gets away. He might be able to go down the line. The ball goes in right field. Zimkowski will round second. 
maybe had an opportunity to head to third, but chasing it down the line, A.J. Perella, the first baseman for Carrick, had to go a long way to get that ball. Of course, that's the risk when you start throwing over to first on a regular basis. And that's probably why he doesn't throw over too often. Two out of three in the dirt. Now from the stretch with Simkowski on second and nobody out. Time called. Stepping out is Kumar. Count is one and one. No, nobody out here in the bottom of the third. Laurel Highlands on top, two to nothing. Checks the runner, comes to the plate, low and outside, two and one. Mentioned Carrick hasn't played a playoff game since 2012 when they qualified for the City League playoffs. Ended up losing to Alderdice in the semifinal round, but have gone dry here since they've joined the WPIL to start the 2013 season. 2 1 pitch curveball in there for a strike. That's kind of the go to pitch for Nathan Robinson. Got a couple of strikeouts with that pitch earlier. Froze both Bonna and Mara. Last at, or last inning back in the bottom half of the second. Runner going, and there's a ground ball up the middle. Skyler Gianetti over to make the play right behind second base onto Perella for the out. So with the runner moving, no play at third. And Kumar is out six to three. You got Simkowski now down at third with only one out in the inning, and Alex Guest coming to the plate. Alex grounded to first in the first inning. Just needs to get this one either short or anywhere really in the infield as Carrick does not bring the infield in. There's a pass ball, or I'm sorry, a wild pitch goes back to the screen, but bounces off the screen back to Chan, the catcher. No chance for Zimkowski to advance. Yeah, probably a good move just to hold it third. And as we said, only one out in the inning. The Mustangs have done a nice job so far in this game, putting the ball in play. There's no reason to try to risk something there. And um, Raw Robinson going from the windup. Out in front a little bit that time was Gask. Big cut there. Swing and a miss for strike one. One and one. Robinson again from the windup. Ground ball gets by Robinson at pitchers and unable to make the play at second base. A slow roller. Tehran Ross charged but was unable to make the play. I'm going to rule that a hit. I think so. Infield single. Give Gesk an RBI. Scores Nate Zimkowski and the Mustangs with a run score now in every inning and still in business here on the bottom half of the third now with Gesk at first. So Gesk does his job. Gets the ball in play. An opportunity there if Nathan Robinson could have made the play at the mound, but just outside of his reach to his left. Gesk now on at first. Curveball in for a strike to Caleb Scott. Scott with a single, stole a base, and scored a run last time up in the second inning. Gesk on here at first. There's a high fly ball down the left side. Could be out of play. Drifting behind the fence. It's got the fourth Mustang to bat here in the bottom half of the third. Makes the count 0 and 2. Really made Smith it. coaching first. Of course, Scott Deberry down at third. Really made a difference when they installed the uh, blue sheeting around the fence here at Mustang Field. I agree. Field. There's the pitch runner going low and outside in the dirt. No throw again as. Scampering in the second with the stolen base, Alex Gesk. Makes the whole complex look a lot nicer as well. Better batter's eye opportunity and uh, kind of sealed it in. Here's the pitch, curveball, swing and a miss at the ball in the dirt. Have to make a play at first. Sprinting down the line was Scott, but he is out on the strikeout. Advancing the third was Gesk. Now two outs with Gasket third and Tyler Becker coming to the plates. Third strikeout of the game for Nathan Robinson. Caleb just a little too anxious that time with two strikes. Took a cut at one in the third, and that's going to bring up Becker walked back in the second. Takes ball one inside. 
You know, like he's done throwing for now on the Carrick side. We'll see if we see him later on in this game. Mustangs extending the lead to th three to nothing here in the third. High and inside for ball two. Really tough to know what you're going to get out of this section this year. West Allegheny seems to be everyone's favorite. They're one of the top programs in the WPIL in 5A a season ago. But I think after West Day, of course, I think it's a real toss up the rest of the way. There's a shot into the gap in left center. I'm sorry, right center. Rounding first with the RBI single is Tyler Becker scoring on the play from third. Alex Gesk now extends the Mustang lead out to four to nothing. So Zimkowski and Guest coming around and scoring here in the third inning. The Mustangs certainly a nice little cushion, and that raises the question, Gary, do you stick with Vecchiola for the fourth inning or maybe try to save him for the Montour game on Saturday or the Trinity game on Monday? Curveball outside to Garrett Meyer stepping in. And, of course, even if he goes the distance today, he still could throw against Trinity. He'd have four days rest before that game on Monday down at WNJ. He really has very few pitches so far in this game. With the uh, pitching lineup that the Mustangs have, they have the luxury. And there's a ball in the dirt on the outside. I'm sorry, Deb, and throw down to second, but in safely with the stolen base, Tyler Becker. So he gets himself into scoring position for Garrett Myers, who now has a one-and-one one count with two outs. He certainly have plenty of options out there. You never know what the weather's going to hold as well. Fine outside. Two balls and a strike. Well, the weekend is expected to be nice. You would anticipate the Mustangs at least playing Saturday at Montour, even if they can't get the game in against Greater Latrobe on Friday. From the stretch... A looper in the infield going back into shallow left is Skyler Gianetti to make the catch for the third out of the inning. And that'll do it for the Mustangs here in the bottom of the third. Scoring two, however, to take a four to nothing lead into the fourth. We'll be back here on WMBS, the South Union Township Sports Network, and the Trib Live Sports Network. Davis and Davis, helping the injured. If you're injured in an accident, after you address the medical problems, you're going to be faced with numerous questions concerning who's going to pay your medical bills, your property damage, the wages that you might be losing if you can't go to work. These are things that you need counsel for. That your income is protected, that your bills are paid, that your family's taken care of. We've been doing this since 1976. We've helped injured people. We can help you. Davis and Davis, attorneys at law. Turn to the experts. Fayette Furnace Company Incorporated, serving the Tri-County area since 1920, the area's oldest and most reliable heating and cooling contractor, specializing in carrier equipment. Employee owned and operated, choosing Fayette Furnace Company and Carrier not only gives you over 200 years of experience, but gives you the experts to help you solve your home's comfort needs. And call Fayette Furnace Company and Carrier to solve your home comfort needs today. Call 724-438-5400 or look up Fayette Furnace Company on the web at FayetteFurnaceCompany.com. Turn to the experts, almost 100 years of serving the Tri-County area. For more information, call Mike at 724-438-5400. That's 724-438-5400 for Fayette Furnace Company. And Chan, A.J. Perella, and Damian Weiss do up for the Carrick Raiders here in the top half of the fourth inning. Laurel Highlands leading Carrick by a score of four to nothing. The Mustangs with a run in the bottom of the first, tacked on a run on the bottom of the second, then added two in the bottom half of the third. Lefty Dino Vecchiola's first pitch, and therefore a strike. Nice fastball to Dylan Chan, who struck out looking back in the first inning. In fact, Gianetti, Chan, and Perella all went down in that top half of the first inning. One of 
actually three of the four strikeouts that Vecchioles recorded in this game. Also sent down Ryan Henderson back in the third inning. And right now Dino just won over the minimum as we enter this top half of the fourth. Chan just fouled off a pitch on the left side. So the count now at 0-2. As you said, Brian, very efficient outing here so far for Vecchiola. Just one hit given up. That was the double to left field from the freshman, Tehran Ross, as Chan takes the pitch there. Kind of moves to one and two. Now Vecchiola is one, two on the way, and it's a line drive. Wow. What a snare there from Garrett Myers at first. Garrett had a Show some hops there to make that grab or retire Chan. Left-handed, just got off the ground, and uh, I would say Garrett's, what, 6'2", maybe? Yep. Nice, tall first baseman, big target, makes a nice play down there at first base. So Chan retired. That'll bring up A.J. Perella. Perella, as we said, also struck out facing Vecchiola back in the first inning. Came into this game batting 444, was 4 of 9 before that strikeout. Now 4 of 10 and takes strike one here against Vecchiola. This top half of the fourth inning being brought to you by the Uniontown Hospital, making a healthy difference in the lives they touch. Now the 0-1, Vecchiola to Perella, and Perella hits this one high in the air to shallow right field. It's going to be the second baseman, Mara, backing up and making the grab for the second out of the inning. So two fly ball outs to start this top half of the fourth inning. Nice fundamentals there by sure. Santino. Just got back to where he could make that play coming forward, and that's what you want to do as an infielder with those short pop-ups in the outfield. Just get yourself behind the play where you can have it all in front of you, and that's exactly what Santino did. Now Damian Weiss with the play to ground it out 1-3. First time up to lead off the top half of the second inning. Takes the first pitch here from Vecchiola outside for ball one. Weiss came into the game batting 333, 3 of 9. Now 3 of 10 with four RBIs so far this season. Next pitch on the way, fouled off again. Another rocket yeah. out here to the right side. Got a lot of those, especially on this right side, evens up the count here at one and one. Laurel Highlands coming off a season that saw the Mustangs go 16 and four, went 13 and one in conference play, winning section three and five a season ago. This one popped up in foul territory and it will go over the fence and out of play. Count now moves to one and two. The Mustangs lone conference loss came at Franklin Regional a season ago. Laurel Islands, Franklin Regional, Gateway, and Greater Latrobe, the four playoff qualifiers out of Section 3 and 5A a season ago. Carrick finished Section 2, 5A play last year, 1-11 in conference play, 2-13 and, and 13 overall. I think they're going to compete more, though, in 2019, and they have some talented players, especially look numbers-wise, what they put up here early in the season. And again, it's tough to really make a lot out of just three games worth of stats, but you look at Gianetti, Chan, Perella, and you see a freshman like Tehran Ross who had that double earlier on this game. They got some players out there, Gary. Absolutely, and uh, it's even more impressive how Dino's been able to move it in and out and keep them off balance, and as you said earlier, just the one hit here through three and two-thirds innings. Dino just entering his junior year. Plenty of talent on the mound for the Mustangs as a lefty. Next pitch here, a little nubber foul into the dugout of Carrick. And way out in front of that one. Count out one and two. Zvecchiola looks for his fifth strike out of the game, trying to finish off Damian Weiss. Taking his time a little here. Long look into Caleb Scott. Lined and fire, and this one hit high in the air to right field. Working over to the line is Tyler Becker, but the ball goes out of play, and is foul again here on the right side. Going to be about 10 balls up on the hill here behind us. Not sure if they have somebody scouring the hill or not. Seen some dogs over there from time to time as well. I was just going to bring that up. And that pitch wow. just misses. Wow. You're right. Caleb yeah, Scott two two. framed that one, tried to pull it back in, a little bit of a jerk pulling it back into the strike zone, but umpire not having it. Some of the windy conditions outside. We decided to set up in the press box here today so we don't have a view of the hill right down the, or situated right down the first baseline. 
2 2. And this a ground ball to Santino Mara at second. Makes the throw over the first to Garrett Myers to retire. Damian Weiss 4 3 to end the inning. So another 1 2 3 inning here in the top half of the fourth. It's 4 0. Laurel Highlands over Carrick here on the Radcliffe Law Firm High School Sports Day. Creditors calling you day and night? Your debt overwhelms you? Although you may feel that you're in a hopeless situation, Zebli Mahalov and White can help. We're a full-service local bankruptcy firm that knows what a difficult time this is and what to do to help you get a fresh start. Call Zebli Mahalov and White today for a free consultation. Your hometown bankruptcy firm. Call us today. Don't borrow more money until you talk to Zebli Mahalov and White. At what point did everything change? When did service get taken out of service industries? It's too bad, because people are busy these days, at life, at work, at play. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you want service, real service, from a person you know and a face you trust. At a bank where changing with the times doesn't mean leaving people behind. We're proud to be a part of your community. We're United Bank, at your service. Moving now to the bottom half of the fourth inning, four to nothing. The Laurel Highlands Mustangs leading the Carrick Raiders. A new pitcher for the Carrick Raiders, Gary, and Chris Molicki, the lefty. Change of pace, uh, bringing in Chris Molicki, as you said, the left-hander. After Nathan Robinson goes three full innings and gives up four runs for the Mustangs on four hits. I'm First sorry, appearance of hits. the season for Molicki, and in fact, he's the seventh pitcher that Carrick's already used so far this season playing their fourth game, and he'll face Michael Brostensky to lead off this inning, and Michael takes the first pitch for a strike on the inside corner. Michael with a sack fly RBI, first time up in the bottom half of the second inning. Now Maliki's 0-1 here to Brostensky. Misses inside, even up the counts at 1-1. One and one. People still coming in, filling up the uh, left field line. 1-1 one, one now on the way to Brostensky. Line drive getting through right in between Tehran Ross and Skylar Gianetti in the center field. Ryan Henderson, quick relay in to hold Brostensky to a single. So that's two plate appearances for Brostensky. Picked up a sack fly RBI first time up. And once again, Brostensky comes through, this time with a single to center field. And the Mustangs in business again to start this bottom half of the fourth inning. Already up. I score of four to nothing. And on the top of the order in Dylan Bonna. Dylan 0 for 2 so far today. Trying to change that. That's a wild pitch to the left of Dylan Chan. That will allow Brostensky to get down a second. Ball just got back to the screen and basically died at the screen. No chance again for Dylan Chan. And the Mustangs have used that running game to their advantage here in the first four innings. Trying to keep it going. Next delivery to Bana, high and outside, and might be seeing some early control issues here from Chris Malicki. The left-hander comes at about three quarters, not over the top, not sidearm. 2-0 now on the way. Another pitch missing high, now 3-0. This half inning being brought to you by Novacare Rehabilitation on Delaware Avenue in Uniontown. Now the 3-0 to Dylan Bana from Chris Malicki. Well outside for ball four. Wasn't even close. So Bono walks the Mustangs with runners on first and second and nobody out here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Into the meat of the Mustang order with Mara Zimkowski and Kumar. Santino, of course, with that triple to center field and scored a run back in the first inning. Struck out last time up. Take the first pitch here for a strike. Count at 0-1. Primer Ozak alongside Gary Frankhauser and Jerry Dupe, Nick Barczak and Bill Madden back in our Union Town Hospital studios on the radio side. We thank you for joining us for WPIL High School Baseball Action. Laurel Highlands hosting Carrick, our second broadcast of the year on both the radio and TV side as Mara takes another pitch. Santino anxious in there, wanting to get that bat on the ball. A very aggressive batter. 
has been all the way through Little League, Pony League, travel teams. Another one missing outside there. Kind of how it's 2-1. We're going to have a little visit here to the mound. That's going to be Carrick head coach Daniel Steubenbort coming out to talk to his pitcher Chris Malicki. Wonder how long of a string they have there on Chris. They have action down in the bullpen again. Number 33 down there warming up for Carrick. Trying to pick up who that is. Alex Mann. Alex Mann. Actually, another was a left DH in the game today. Yeah, another left hander. Discussion still ongoing. Dylan Chan, Chris Malicki, and Daniel Steubenbort, the manager for the Carrick Raiders, talking things over here right in front of the mound. I think Steubenbort just trying to slow him down a little bit. He was very quick on his pitches from between pitches and uh, really trying to find the control that he needs. Needed to slow down a little bit. So Chris is going to stay out there on the mound for Carrick. Yet to record an out here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Two on, nobody out. Mustangs up four to nothing. And Santino Mara at the plate, counted two and one. Maliki to Mara. Runners now in motion, and that pitch is high. And again, no throw from Dylan Chan that will allow Rostensky to get down to third. Bonna into second. And the Mustangs now with two in scoring position with nobody out. And Santino Mara facing a 3 1 count against Chris Maliki. And uh, kind of unbelievably, Carrick does not bring the infield in. 3-1 pitch, almost clipped Mari, got out of the way of it. Nonetheless, it'll be ball four for a walk. So back-to-back -back walks issued by Maliki, and that'll load up the bases for Nate Zimkowski. Now the infield in a little bit, at least at first and third. The base is loaded for Zimkowski at a sack fly RBI back in the first, walked and scored a run in the third inning. Came into this game just one for six, but two productive plate appearances so far. He takes ball one here against Maliki. Opening conference game of the year for both Laurel Highlands and Carrick. Mustangs enter 2-0 overall. Carrick 2-1. 1-0 pitch now to Nate Zimkowski. And again, well off the plate. And these last couple of pitches, Gary Maliki has been well outside of the plate. And he's kind of looking over to his manager and the manager looking down the line to see if his relief pitcher is ready. I don't think there's going to be much more of a string here for Maliki. 2-0 pitch finally finds the strike zone, 2-1. Carrick and Maliki needed that just to settle things down. Still without an out recorded here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Mustangs already up 4 to nothing, trying to blow this game open. 2-1 pitch and Zimkowski hard shot. Is it fair? Yes, it is. Foul. Down the third yep. baseline. Now they rule it foul. A late signal there. So now ruled foul. The count will be full. At I'm sorry. Must have been some kind of a what are they saying? Catcher interference. Oh. Catcher's interference. Wow. So that'll score the that. run. Yeah, we were a little confused as to why things stopped. We didn't, weren't real sure if it was a fair ball or a foul ball down the left field line, but it is catcher's interference, which gives him Koski an RBI. All right. Don't see that every day. So so keeps... Run scored for Brustensky. It's now five to nothing. I think everybody's confused right now, Gary, as far as what's where they going should on. be. Correct. So that's going to move Bonna down to third. Correct. So you'll have Mara at Mara second, second, and Zimkowski on first with catcher's interference. His second RBI. So I take it the ball was ruled foul. Then it's a dead ball. Dead ball. Okay. So I gotcha. But if the ball would have been fair in that situation, you could have had a basing bases clearing type situation. Right. So as soon down as there. that bat hits the catcher's glove it's That's a dead it. ball correct it's frozen so now five to nothing laurel highlands and at the plate nick kumar nick with a ground ball out six three last time up reach via air in the first inning now time called here that might be it for maliki second visit of the inning we're going to see a pitching change here for the carrick raiders so laurel highlands a run across already this inning threatening again up five to nothing and carrick Headed to the bullpen to use their third pitcher of the afternoon. And we'll take a quick time out here on WMBS, the Triple Live High School Sports Network, and the South Union Township Sports Network with Laurel Highlands leading 5 to nothing. 
Just sit right down and you hear a tale, a tale of a fateful call. You better pay those bills right now or you take a mighty fall. He really didn't know what to do, so he turned to those who did. Zeppeli, Mahalo, Van White, your bankruptcy crew, your bankruptcy crew. So no matter how deep in debt you are, if your back's against the wall, Zeppeli, Mahalo, Van White, just give them a call. Back here at the Landman Field at Laurel Highland Science School, the Carrick Raiders about to use their third pitcher of the afternoon, and Alex Mann. This will be Mann's second appearance so far this season on the mound. He's worked an inning and a third, given up just one hit, struck out two, walked one, has yet to yield a run, has thrown 23 pitches so far this season. And as Mann finishes up his warm-ups, Jerry on the TV side zooming in on the entire Vernon Scott family down the left field line here cheering on Caleb Scott, the catcher for the Mustangs. You got Rick Vernon, Tom Vernon, Jason Scott. And a nice crowd out here for this home opener for the Laurel Islands Mustangs. The Mustangs were scheduled to open at home against Connellsville last week, and Connellsville the last minute said they weren't making the trip. So Mustangs may have an opportunity to add a couple more non-conference games later on this season. As we mentioned, Derry also canceled on Laurel Highlands twice within the past week. Try to play there Saturday and then try to reschedule on Monday. Neither game happened. So Nick Kumar at the mound, or on the, Nick Kumar at the plate, excuse me, with Alex Mann on the mound. The count now 2-0. Mann to Kumar. Bases loaded, still nobody out. Mustangs up five to nothing, trying to add to it. Must have been a 3-0 counts. Because with a low pitch there from Mann, Kumar walks. Of course, Maliki started to face Kumar before the pitching change was made. So that walks in a run. So an RBI walk for Nick Kumar. Second run of the inning scored for the Mustangs as Dylan Bonna comes around. It's now six to nothing. Of course, you still have the ten run five inning rule. In play as well, Mustangs are ready with six across, and the base is loaded and nobody out. Laurel Highlands trying to blow this game wide open and maybe head home a little bit early today. Alex Guest takes a strike there from Alex Mann. Guest one for two today, infield single with an RBI and a run scored last time up after he grounded out three unassisted in the first inning. That pitch misses low to even up the count at one and one. You'd have to think for Carrick head coach Daniel Steubenbort right now, he's just looking for strikes. Next pitch on the way to Gask. And this one hit over the left field fence and out of play. Foul. Kind of moves to one and two. And you look at the last couple of batters that the Carrick pitchers have faced. You have the RBI walk issue to Kumar. Zimkowski got on with catcher's interference, picked up an RBI there. Walk tomorrow, walk to Bana. Brstensky single to lead off the inning. And that pitch... Freezes Alex Gask, and finally a strikeout and not recorded there on the Carrick side as Gask goes down looking at strike three. Alex not agreeing with that one, but to no avail. Brings up Caleb Scott. He's the seventh Mustang to bat here in this bottom half of the fourth inning. The first pitch to Scott, sent foul by Caleb again here on the right side. Counted 0-1. Caleb single to center field, stole a base and scored a run first time up, struck out back in the third inning. So one for two today. Oh, man's 0-1 to Caleb Scott, and the lefty delivers. And Scott again hits it in the foul territory here on the right side, out of play, and the count moves to 0-2. Tyler Becker due up next for the Mustangs. So as you said, Brian, at least uh, man finding the strike zone a little bit here to the Mustang batters. Making Laurel Highlands Lee swing at it. Now the 0-2 to Caleb Scott from Alex Mann. That's a fastball misses just outside. Against the righty Scotts. Counting out one and two. Mann taking his time. 
shaking off some signals. 1-2 now on the way to Caleb, and Caleb again fouls it off. Count remains 1-2. and two. In our next broadcast, both on the radio and the TV side, coming up on Friday, weather permitting, Mustangs hosting Greater Latrobe on the air on the radio side with our Sprouse Insurance Group pregame show 345. First pitch set for 4 o'clock. Hopefully the weather will cooperate here on Friday. Here we go again to Caleb Scott and a line drive, and this one another foul ball here on the right side. Just a shot down the right field line, and that ball just slicing foul about 10 feet. Would have been extra bases, but for that little slice that got it into foul territory. Kind of like your driver a little bit, Gary. Nah. <laughs> Here we go again. Count one and two. Alex Mann to Caleb Scott. Six nothing lead for Laurel Highlands. Two runs already across here in the inning, and Caleb kind of golfing that one. That's fair it's ball. A fair ball down the third base line, and the Mustangs will score a couple of runs here. Carousel was moving on that one. Line drive on the ground. Two hopper past third base down into the left field corner there, and it again dies out there. Ground a little bit wet, and left fielder Dominique Weiss having a little bit of a Trouble getting to that ball, scoring two runs. I'm sorry, three, two more runs. Two runs, yeah, two, two RBI four, double. Two RBI double for Caleb Scott. Now has it at eight to nothing, Laurel Islands. Yeah, scoring on the play there, Mara and Zimkowski. Scott now with four RBIs on the season, and Tyler Becker, the eighth Mustang to bat here in this half inning, takes strike one against Alex Mann. Mustang still with two runners in scoring position. Scott now at second, and Nick Kumar at third. And the next pitch there misses low to Tyler Becker. Just one out in the Correct. inning. Still only one out in the inning. And uh, two men in scoring position could uh, get to that 10-run differential that we talked about. And, of course, Carrick still would have an opportunity to bat in the top half of the fifth inning before the game would be stopped. The Mustangs still need to play another two here as Becker takes that pitch for a strike. Get back into the batter's box. Lefty facing the lefty. Alex Mann. That pitch low and outside. No force out as the Mustangs have second and third. So, again, Tyler Becker just looking, looking to put it in play somewhere. Kind of three and one from Mann to Becker. That pitch misses low for ball four. So to walk the bases and Garrett Meyer would have walked to load the bases. And Garrett Myers will be the ninth Mustang to bat here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Myers a single to center field first time up in the second inning. Flew out to the shortstop Skyler Gianetti in the third inning. Table set again here for Myers and the Mustangs up eight to nothing. And Myers takes a pitch there low and outside. Out now at 1-0, and, and certainly a positive way to start the conference season for Laurel Highlands here today, Gary. Sure is. Mustangs, opportunity to uh, have a short game, but I think they would prefer to have the work. Myers takes a pitch there for a strike, but still you have an opportunity to end it. You get a conference win. Take them any wrong way you yet. can get them. Correct. For sure. Now the 1-1 one -one on the way to Myers, well outside. Runners again hold their position. Nice block there from the catcher, Dylan Chan. We saw that last year, Brian. The first probably, what, five games never went the distance. Correct. Laurel well, Highlands has had some nice dominant stretches over the years, and last year was one of those seasons. Conference title for the Mustangs, and now man in danger here of walking Garrett Myers and walking in another run, count of three and one. Bases loaded for the Mustangs. Still bottom of the fourth inning. 3-1 pitch on the way and catches the corner. I think Myers was making man throw a strike there, taking it. Now we're full three and two. Just one out. Man will wind and fire the payoff pitch to Garrett Myers. And Garrett takes it outside for ball four. So another walk and another RBI walk for the Mustangs. Let's get As a bring Myers in. walks in, Nick Kumar. Correct. 
And this inning, Gary, you'll have now Michael Brostensky batting around. He'll be the 10th Mustang to come to the plate here in the bottom half of the fourth inning, which has featured five walks from Carrick Pitchers. Brostensky fouls off the first pitch here. It's now 9 to nothing, Laurel Highlands. Mustangs have scored five runs here in the bottom half of the fourth. Once Nathan Robinson kind of ran out of gas, it's been tough sailing here in the Carrick bullpen. No one for man to Brostensky, and that one misses inside. Count now even at one and one. That was close to getting away from Dylan Chan as well. And it sure was. And uh, on the Carrick side, you probably got to believe that their coaching staff is looking at what they have the rest of the week and trying to deal with their pitching staff, maybe not using who they might need here later. Here's a ground ball, and it's booted there by Perella. And it'll get past the second baseman, Taewon Ross, as well. Two additional runs score here for the Mustangs. And to score that E3, Gary? Yes, sir. Two runs coming in. Caleb Scott and Tyler Becker scoring for the Mustangs. Down to second, Garrett Myers on the E3. On base, Michael Brustinski. So still with just one out, that's going to bring up Dylan Bonner for his second at bat of the inning. He walked and scored earlier this inning. Another one of our sponsors to thank, Jason Scott and South Union Township. We mentioned Jason on the TV side as well earlier, taking in the game for his son, Caleb, here today. So here we go. Top of the order again, and Dylan Bonna takes strike one here against Alex Mann. Seven runs scored already by the Mustangs here in the bottom of the fourth. They lead it 11 to nothing over the Carrick Raiders. Next pitch to Bonin. and Dylan hits this one high in the air. Should be a routine play in center field for Ryan Henderson, who gets under it and makes the grab for the second out of the inning. And Garrett Myers still at second. Brings up Santino Mara. He also walked and scored. Had that triple to center field and scored a run back in the first inning. There's one for two today with a walk and two runs scored in the contest for the Mustangs. Man's first pitch here to Maras, and Mara swings at the first pitch, hits this one high in the air to center field, and this one will be dropped by Ryan Henderson. And look out, Myers scores, Brostensky scores, and Mara slides into third safely. Long, so way, long way for Henderson to go, but he did he had get it in the glove. To, had it in his glove. We're going to have to rule that an error. Correct. And as we mentioned, the Mustangs now have scored Nine runs here in the inning. Played at 13 to nothing. Had to check the math on that one, Gary. And you still have Mara down at third. First pitch swinging again from Nate Zimkowski. He'll hit this one high in the air to left. And this one will be caught by Dominic Weiss to end the inning. But an inning that saw the Mustangs score nine runs. He led it 13 to nothing. And Carrick's going to have to get four back to extend this game in the top half of the fifth, which comes your way next year on the Radcliffe Law Firm High School Sports Day.
We're back here at Lambin Field with the Mustangs plating nine runs in the fourth inning to now lead 13 to nothing. How odd was that last half inning? You had two hits and five walks and nine runs scored. And a couple errors that contributed to the nine runs. So uh, Dino will be out there trying to lock things down here in the top half of the fifth with a 13 to nothing lead. And Stopped. He has just fa he has faced just one more than the minimum. Correct. Through the first four innings. The stop of the fifth being brought to you by the center's free hab services and physical therapist Jim Burns. Got to get all those uh, sponsors in I this do. inning. Have <laughs> the post game show too. Vecchiola to face Dominique Weiss. We expect it to be Weiss, Robinson, and Mann, unless they make any changes here in the fifth. And again, Carrick needs four runs here in this half inning if they want to play more than four and a half today. Foul back for a one ball, one strike count to Dominique Weiss. Tough for Carrick who came into this game. Gary, pretty optimistic after a two and one start to the season and talking to their head coach and some of the players in their dugout, they thought they should have been three and oh, let that game get away from them last night. Foul back that time by Dominique and Makes the count, one ball and two strikes. Leadoff hitter here in the top of the fifth with the Mustangs on top, 13 to nothing. And you come here for your conference opener and just get rocked. Protecting there nicely was Weiss as he got a little piece of that foul back to the screen. Also have to thank General Dennis, Dr. Edward Wheatek, longtime supporter of Laurel Highlands High School Baseball and State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman. One two offering from Vecchiola inside corner for a call strike three. So that is the one, two, three, five, four, fifth, fifth strikeout for Vecchiola just here in four and a third innings. Brings up number sixteen, that's Maliki who came in for Robinson. Batting left handed. His first opportunity against Vecchiola takes strike one on the inside corner. A couple things to clean up, Gary, as well, from our last broadcast. Tony and I had mentioned that Laurel Highlands had only three coaches in their high school history. They've actually had five going all the way back to the school's formation in the late 60s. Foul ball back at the concession stand. Luckily, and nobody was there. Went right off the yeah, it window. Been, when it bounced <laughs> in, maybe to the uh, hot dog stand. Yeah, yeah, hot dog stand, yeah. Ron Fudella, another coach. Francis DiCarlo, of course, Vernon Landman, and now DeBerry. There's strike another three strike. called on the outside corner. Yeah, Brian. So two strikeouts here in the fifth. Down to the last out opportunity now for Carrick in the form of Alex Mann. And our colleague, of course, the mayor, Tony Hanola, had mentioned that he threw the first ever no-hitter in Laurel Highlands high school history. Did you happen to know that, Gary? I did not know that, and I'm not sure how he knows that. <laughs> he said they told him that. It was against Mapletown, by the way. He forgot to mention who it was against. Oh, okay. Mapletown's second game of the season, late 70s. That surprises me, and many good pitchers as the Mustangs have had. Swing and a miss. One and one count now to Alex Mann. Just want to get a couple of those nuggets in there before we wrap things up, since we're going to have a shorter than normal broadcast, it appears. Proud of my friend, Tony. Fastball just misses low. Dina thought he had that one. He'll take a little stroll around the mound. No matter if it was against Mapletown or any other school around the WPI, it's a heck of an accomplishment to pitch a no-hitter anywhere. Absolutely. 2-1. Fastball at the knees for strike two. Jerry said he threw a softball no-hitter before. In the playoffs, wow. That's yeah. even more impressive then. I think it was slow pitch. Slow too. pitch. 2-2 <laughs> two, two pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. And that will end the inning and end the game as Dino Vecchiola strikes out the side here in the top of the fifth. Very efficient outing there by Dino Vecchiola. Our finals 13 to nothing. Laurel Highlands. And we'll be back to tell you all about it on the postgame show here on WMBS and the South Union Township Sports Network. Davis and Davis, helping the injured. In any endeavor, experience is probably the most important factor. 
but it's got to be the right kind of experience. Experience in the community where the case is tried, where the jurors live, where the judges work. We've been doing this since 1976 at Davis and Davis. That's a long time. Davis and Davis, attorneys at law. Well, the number 13, very lucky for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs here this afternoon. A 13 to nothing win over the Carrick Raiders as Andino Vecchiola pitches a one-hit shutout, Gary. Absolutely, and uh, looking at the statistics, very easy statistics on the Carrick side. No runs, just one hit. They did commit three errors, and they obviously did not leave anybody. Well, they did leave one on base. And uh, for the Mustangs, 13 runs, seven hits. Mustangs did not commit an error. Good defense behind Vecchiola, the opportunities that they did have. And uh, they did leave five men on base. Hitting for the Mustangs, Santino Mara with a couple RBIs, one for four. Nate Zimkowski with a couple RBIs. Uh, sacrifice fly and a RBI on catcher's interference. We don't see that every day. And uh, Caleb Scott with a couple RBIs going two for three, a single in the second and a double in the fourth, in that big fourth inning where the Mustangs plated nine runs. So the Mustangs very efficiently come away with their first conference victory, 13 to nothing, and that will provide some momentum as they head into Friday's action, Brian. Again, that's our next scheduled broadcast on both the radio and the TV side. The Mustangs taking on the Greater Latrobe Wildcats on the radio side around the air at the Sprouse Insurance Group pregame show at 345. Five first pitch at 4 o'clock. Also TV replays here on the South Union Township Sports Network, Atlantic Broadband Channel 17, Armstrong Channel 61, and on YouTube by searching South Union TV. 13 to nothing, your final score here this afternoon. We're back with a final word from Landman Field here at Laurel Highlands High School in just a moment here on WMBS, the Triple Half High School Sports Network, and the South Union Township Sports Network. This afternoon and this evening's game was brought to you as a joint cooperative venture featuring the supervisors of South Union, Bob Schiffbeier, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, Atlantic Broadband Cable, Armstrong Cable, and everyone at CUTV, Gary Smith, and his staff. This has been Brian Rozak and Gary Frankhauser, Jared Dupe on the camera, another South Union Township Sports Network presentation, our final once again in five innings, Laurel Highlands 13, Carrick nothing. Good night, everyone.